Hey, good afternoon, sports fans. PB and Z Sports Chaos, your weekly sports sandwich. And we're coming at you with our NFL preview show, the eve of the hundredth anniversary of the NFL. NFL. And we are fueled this week by a little beer that's appropriate, we believe, for the NFL kickoff. It's from Opa Opa Brewing out in the western part of the state, the 413 once again. It's the Poker Face Pumpkin Eel. Hmm. I actually, you know what? I'm so so on pumpkin beers, I happen to like that one. All right, here's what we get coming at you. We got our two minute drill as usual. We got our NFL preview. We got our Pats outlook for this season. We got our playoff picks for you. And then we're going to do a little thing we call the pick six, where we <laughs> pick six games of this week's NFL action to see how we do against each other. And it's going to be interesting this week. <laughs> All right, hey, last week, PB and Z, we were out at Boston College. We see the BC Eagles. They had a huge ACC win over their rival, Virginia Tech, 35-28. They were a four-point dog, and they were explosive and good in that game. I loved it. This week, they're home against Richmond. They should be up 2-0 after that game easily. Yeah, they'll the destroy way, the Spiders. Yeah, they will. Hey, by the way, the AP Top 25 had a pretty good week. They were 24-1 and uh, last week. The only loss was number 11, Oregon, to number 16, Auburn. And now they pretty much uh, uh -huh. switch places in tech, the standings. Tech wasn't, tech wasn't rated? Uh, Virginia Tech? No. Oh, no, okay. no not, in the, okay. not in the AP. Oh, okay. Hey, by the way, the performance of the week, in my mind, had to be the Bama transfer. Jalen Hurts for OU, Oklahoma University. Six touchdowns, three throwing, three running, 508 total yards. PB, last week... We did our preview show. I said, Jalen Hurst, possible Heisman Trophy. You said, no way. It's Tua and Trevor. Yeah. By the way, now the odds came out Tuesday morning. He is 3-1, to one, tied with Trevor and Tua. What yeah. do you think? Is he still a, a think, long shot? I think it's an immediate reaction. I mean, they played the Cougars of Houston, right? Um, they're not a, a recognizable force in, in not this college year. football. Right, right. So... You know, talk to me when he starts playing some real teams, and we'll see. Okay. Uh, and we'll see what, you know, Tua and um, and Trevor are going through, you know, the ACC, and they're going through the SEC football. I mean, it's, okay. you know, we'll, we'll see. Still impressive performance. All right. Hey, we get some marquee matchups finally this week. We get number 12, Texas A&M. I knew you liked those guys. They're going up to Clemson, who's the number one team in the country. And we get number six, LSU, going over to Austin, Texas, to play the Longhorns, number nine. I personally think losers of both those games are out of the playoffs. You happen to disagree. I think you think that yeah. I mean, they, LSU can lose and still be in it, and you think Texas A&M can lose and still be in it because of what? Because of the fact that they're the last game of the year, they play each other, uh, which I think could really put them in position to either play for that SEC championship and or secure themselves in a, in a spot. Okay, conversely. With, with, with that one loss. Right. Um, conversely, like if said, Clemson gets upset, they might be done. But... <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But 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 think about A and M's route to get there. They got to play Auburn. They got to play. They got a tough. They got to play LSU. I mean, yeah, yeah. on top of playing Clemson on the road. So if they can if they can come out of that season with one loss, I I think you 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 got to give them the nod. Okay. So hey, by the way, Saturday is also the 40th anniversary of ESPN. We've talked about it on some earlier shows. All this week they're doing their top 40 moments in sports. This week, they're at number 20 down to number 11. And I was a little surprised by these rankings, PB. Listen to this one. They had the 17th all-time moment in the last 40 years, was the Sox beat the Yankees in 04 and then winning the first World Series in 80-something years. That was 17th. I want you to listen to this. 16th, they had the Patriots in all six Super Bowl wins. They couldn't pick a couple moments out of any. They just said all six Super Bowl wins. I don't get that. But you're going to die when you hear this. After that... The 2016 Cavaliers winning the NBA title. The 84 Doug Flutie touchdown pass. I like that one a lot. I don't. I mean, he won the Heisman Trophy for him, so maybe. Christian Leitner's shot in the semifinals against Kentucky. Then they had the Cubs finally at number 12. And then the Jack Nicholas and Tiger Woods and some uh, big tournaments they won over their career. But are they screwing the Sox? To 17th? I, you know what? Here's what I think. I think that they're looking at it more as a actual single moment. Because when you talk about the Doug Flutie pass and when you talk about the Christian Lane legitimate, shot, legitimate, legit, right, right. It's, it's a single play. Whereas the Red Sox winning and the Patriots, all the things they did, those that's like a body of work. 
right? And there's not like this. Well, you could have picked one thing out of that. I mean, you, I you, think you just winning the World well, you, Series. You, you could have put the. You could have took the, the steal. Was it um, who stole second base? Um, Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts. You could take it. The they Dave did Robert mention steal that. It was, but they did show that highlight. And called the, it out. That right. would be a moment, like right, right. one particular thing. So I think the whole thing is a crock of crap. Anyways, <laughs> I, I don't like it. I mean, there's no way those should be ranked ahead of of the Red Sox and Patriots. I, I, I got to see what the top ten looks like <laughs> after that, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, U.S. Open, both the top seeds and the men and the women are gone. They lost. They're both out before the quarterfinals, as a matter of fact. And the number two seed, the men, Roger Federer, I talked about this a few weeks back when we talked about goats. I said, I don't think either of the goats in uh, in tennis, Serena or Roger, are going to win again, or Tiger Williams. Serena's still going strong. PB, am I wrong? Can Serena win again? Um well, we asked this a couple weeks ago. And yeah. You asked me out of that group who can who's most likely to win a, a Grand Slam event or a major event. And you think and, she can? And I and I said Serena, and I thought this U.S. Open was probably her best shot to do it. So I think it's her last um, shot. I, it could be her last shot as well. All and, right. and I like her, and I think she can do it. Looks that way. All right. Hey, last note on baseball this week. We joked last week that the Twins might set the Major League record by the end of August. That was on the 31st, and literally they did. They hit six home runs. They're now at 271 home runs with 24 games left. PB, are they a threat to hit 300 home runs in one season? Well, based on the average that they're at right now, if you extrapolate that out, they will be well over 300, so yes. Is that absurd? Um, 300 home runs by it, one team? Well, it is. I mean, the ball, didn't the, the Dodgers just break the NL record, too? They got 250, you're right. I mean, the, the ball's definitely juiced. You know, it's a, it's a juiced ball error. I, I just I, can't I, imagine. I'd rather, the players, I'd rather the ball be juiced than the players, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no offense, Barry Bonds. <laughs> or, right. Mar- or Mark McGuire. Or, Mark or Sammy Wyatt. Sosa. Yeah, or Sammy Sosa, yeah. Or Roger Clemens. All right, here we go. <laughs> We're going to talk about our NFL preview. We've been waiting a while. Here's what we get coming for you. We're going to talk about our breakout stars and our surprise player. Oh, yeah. This is going to be great. We'll pick our MVP, our Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, and Rookie of the Year. And then we're going to talk about what we think is our three big storylines of this year as we head into the season. Then we're going to move on to our predictions. Who wins each division and who are the two wild cards? Right. Then we'll talk a little of the Pats. What's the three big storylines there? Any big roster surprises in your mind? Then we'll move on to what we're going to pick as our conference final predictions. It may not be so surprising after all. And then we'll give you our Super Bowl prediction. Not the winner, but who makes it. We're going to hold you off on the winner. Yes, we are. And then we'll follow up with our pick six. The six games we like this week. All right, brother. Let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, i got to tell you something. A little DYK. Cam Newton set a dubious record this week. Most one-handed catches in, in 60 seconds. He caught 51. Is that even noteworthy? No. Doesn't mean a thing. No, it doesn't. I don't <laughs> think so either. He's not even a receiver. <laughs> what, who cares? <laughs> Apparently, it's a headline on ESPN. All right. Hey, who are your three breakout stars this season in the NFL? All right. I got. Um, I have uh, James Washington as uh, the receiver for the, for the uh, Ooh, Steelers. All right. That's as mine one. as well. It's one of mine. Okay. I like it. I have uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, the Green receiver Bay. from Green Bay. Okay. All right. Because um, I, I like Big Ben throwing the ball to, to, to um, yep. you know, Washington, and I like Rodgers throwing the ball to Valdez-Scantling. All right. And then my third one, a little bit of a surprise here. It's a rookie. Uh, tight end in Detroit, TJ Hawkinson. Ooh, you're going with TJ. Yeah. Okay. Those are my three breakout players. All right. Let me give you. I, I'm tied with uh, James Washington. I got him as well. I got one for you. Jacoby Brissett. All right. I like he, that. He has to break out if the Colts are going to do anything, right? Yeah. That's a good one. And the third <laughs> one is the guy that's going to probably be the second receiver on the Cowboys, Michael Gallup. Okay. I can All see right. that. All right. Surprise player. Give me one surprise player this year. I'm going to go uh, Dalvin Cook in Minnesota. Ooh, you liked him. You talked about him. Yeah. We did our, our top 10 yeah. running backs. So. And, and you look at that offense, and, okay. and you look at the, the receivers they have with Diggs and Thielen, and it just opens up that run game. And, and, and Cook can catch the ball out of the backfield, too. So I, I look for him to do some good things. Speaking of a guy who can catch the ball out of the backfield who's going to have a surprisingly good year as a comeback player of the year, in my mind, LaShawn McCoy. Shady McCoy oh, going shady. to KC. That was a huge trade last week. Don't yeah. you think so? Yeah, it was big. Oh. Yep. All right. Hey, we're going to talk MVP now. Who do you like as your candidate right now as the MVP? MVP for the year. 
I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, yeah. okay. That's not a. You know what? Ooh, that's a good pick. I'm gonna take Drew Brees. Okay. I'm gonna Ooh, go Brees. Okay, right. coming out as a. You know, yeah. this is turning forty this year, right? Yeah. Let's see if he can do it. All right. Offensive player of the year. Offensive player of the year. Um, I am gonna go with. I want to go with Christian McCaffrey. Whoa, yeah. McCaffrey! You know that's yeah. actually a really good pick. He might be the best fantasy player of the year. So who knows? That could lead to being the offensive player of the year. I'm going to take Mahomes. He's not going to be repeat MVP, but he's going to be right there as that, player of the that's year. That's a again. safe pick. I, safe uh, pick. I didn't go on limbs. McCaffrey's kind of safe too. We didn't go on limbs. All right, All right. defensive player of the year. Uh Khalil Mack. I think he's a beast. Chicago's defense is a beast uh, as a unit. I, I just think he gets it. I'm, you know what? I'm going Mac. I was very tempted to say to JV and Clowney after the trade for Seattle because I know Carroll put him in a good position and he's playing for a contract. Contract year. Yep. I think Khalil will be the guy. All, All right. right. Give me a rookie of the year. Who do you like for rookie of the year? Rookie of the year, I think hands down is going to be Josh Jacobs, running back for Whoa. Oakland. He's going to take it to the house. Okay. Yep. Oh man. All right. Who do you uh, got? I'm going to go Devin Bush, man. I think the Steel is going to steal with him when they All got right. him on tenth or eleventh, right? The Wolverine. Yes. Out of yeah, Michigan, right? Out of Michigan, yeah. All right. All right. Give me three storylines as we head into this season. What are your three storylines you're looking at heading into this NFL season? Oh, man. Well, first of all, we got we to gotta look at um, Andrew Luck and his recent retirement. Um, <laughs> That's a big storyline. I mean, Indy, Sports Illustrated picked Indy to, be in, to beat Kansas City in the divisional round and then face the Patriots in the conference championship. And right. then Patriots beating them. But still, right. they had... The Colts right there. Um, and I think the Colts were the clear favorite to win that NFC, I that had AFC him, South. I had them as a South up until last week. Yeah, <laughs> and now and now with the how tough that division is, with, with Tennessee in there, with, with Jacksonville in there, with Houston in there, they could finish last. So I think that's probably right now the biggest storyline to me going okay. into the year. Um Freddie Kitchens is my other story. Oh, the Browns. You got one of mine. Okay, yes. Can can he coach that team up? What's that team going to be like after a loss? How are they going to react? Are they going to start fighting in the locker room? What kind of control is he going to have? There's lots of talent there, lots of stars there. So I'm. Do they implode? Do they implode as a result of that? All right, what's your third one? And then my third one is going to be um, the, the recent signing of Zeke. I think the Cowboys. Oh, he's <laughs> preaching to the choir. I love it. He's drinking I, the Kool-Aid, as I, they say. I really think Zeke Elliott is probably one of the best running backs in the league, clearly. Um, that team was like teetering on you know, playoff potential without him. With him, I think right now the Eagles are probably shitting their pants. <laughs> and, and I think they can make a run. All right, so, man. He's my third. That's my third. Well, you got one of mine. The Browns imploding is definitely one of mine. I think the other one for me was the big moves made by the Texans. Getting Laramie Tunsil from the Dolphins at left tackle, one of the best left tackles in the game. And getting a true bona fide number two wide receiver in Kenny Stills back uh, sitting next to DeAndre Hopkins. Huge. And that propels in my mind, and I'll talk about in a few minutes, where where I think the uh, Texans are going to go. And then my other one is the Raiders imploding. I mean, with the news that just came out today, Antonio Brown has been a whole distraction, the whole training camp. Now they suspended him because they're getting sick of his BS because of contact, conduct detrimental to the team. I, I think that's going to be a huge, yeah. huge soap opera all he, year long. He was a cancer in the locker room in Pittsburgh. They said, sayonara, don't, hit, don't let the door hit you on the way out when he left Pittsburgh. And now he's creating the a la perfect friggin' Raiders situation, goes into Oakland and creates a shit show down there. Funny thing, you said he's a Hall of Fame player. Who was another wide receiver that was much like that that actually got into the Hall of Fame this past year that was a cancer as well? Keyshawn? Terrell Owens, right? Oh, Terrell Owens, yeah. Terrell Same Owens. type right, of guy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. All right, right, let's move right on. Let's talk about our predictions for the division. Start with the AFC East. Hands down, no brainer, Pats. Me too. All right. Easy one. All right. Moving on to the north. I think we have a little bit of um Yeah, despite what I just said about the Browns, I still think they're the most talented team. I'm not sold on the Steelers this year. Ravens and Bengals, they're not there. It's it's the Browns in the north. I got the Steelers. I happen to still like them. I think they get a lot of stuff there. What do you think in the South? This is a big one. This is a crazy one. South's going to be pretty competitive. I think the Colts obviously fall down a couple notches with Luck not being there anymore. 
Uh, Titans, uh, they were, you know, they they can get coached up with, with Vrabel. They got Mike some Vrabel. talent there. They just don't have what they need at quarterback. I just don't see that team as an offensive threat. Yep. Um, so easy with the Jags in Houston. And I know you just said that the, 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 the Texans made a bunch of moves. I'm still sold on the Jaguars. I think they have a solid defense. I like Foles there. I'm going Jacksonville with the South. He has a Nick Foles bobblehead back in his house. Not All right. really. Who do you like in the West? <laughs> West, I'm going to go uh, Chiefs. Easy. It's an easy one. Yeah. All right, give me two wild cards. I got the uh, Chiefs as well. All right, and what about in the song? Oh. oh. <laughs> I get the Texans. I get Texans. I All think right. those moves propel pick. them. Fair I was pick. not going to pick them to those moves. All right. Uh, and I'll put the Texans into the wild card. So you got them for a wild card. I got them right, that wild, wild card. Who's your other one? Um, I don't see anybody in the East or the North competing at all. Okay. Outside of the of, of the, the Browns and the Patriots. So I'm going to go with the L.A. Chargers as my second wild card. Ooh. And I call right. them L.A. Do you notice that? You did. Good good move. Yeah. I get the Colts. They're going to be the wild card in that division. I think Jacoby's going to be all right. He'll get them 11 wins. And then I'm going to take the Browns. I, I think there's a lot of chances they could implode, but on the other hand, they could be awfully, awfully good, right? Okay. All right. Let's move on to the NFC. This ought to be good. Give me your NFC East team. I uh, got to go with the boys. Oh, I, I, just, I don't believe it. I, I thought you were going to pick Philly for okay. sure. No, I got to go with the Dallas Cowboys on this oh, one. They signed Zeke. Right. Um, I, I'm actually, I don't like Philly. You have this thing that you think I like Philly. I'm not a Philly fan. Sorry, all of my... Philly fans out there, but um, <laughs> now we're slamming them. Yeah, uh, no, it's the Cowboys in the East. All right, who do you get? I get the Cowboys as well. Who do you get in the North? Uh, the North is going to be tough. It is going to be tough. It's going to be a tough race. Um, you, you know, you got the Vikings, you got the Bears, who clearly have one of the top defenses in the league, right? And you got the Packers, who I think have done a lot on defense, and you got the whole Aaron Rodgers show there. Lions, uh, sorry, Mike Patricia, your team's not there yet. <laughs> no, not even close. No. Um, so all that in, I, I really like what the Packers did on defense, and I think their offense is always going to be there. Rodgers stays healthy. I'm going to give the nod to Green Bay. I get the Vikings. I think they're more balanced. Okay. What about the South? Um, I, New Orleans. New Orleans has sniffed the Super Bowl the last two years. They, they've lost the a- NFC Championship game two years in a row on what could be considered, you know, miracles and questionable calls. So uh, they get back there this year, and they, I think they go to the Super Bowl this year, actually. I like the Saints as well in the South. There's another good team in that division. I'll talk about them momentarily, but the South, Saints win it. So give me your West. West, I'm very interested in seeing what the Niners can do this year. Um, I'm not going to have them win the division. I'm interested in seeing what they can do. I think they can compete, but at the end of the day, the Rams are the more talented team. I like McVay as a coach, uh, even though he couldn't figure out how to play the Patriots, which he will never do. I, the, if they play again in the, in the, Probably in the Super not. Bowl, the Patriots would kill him again. But um, but I, I like the Rams in the West. I like the Rams. They lost nobody from the same team they went to the Super Bowl, and they're a young team. I think they come back again and win that division. All right, give me a wild card set. Wild cards. So I'm going to go with um, the Philadelphia Eagles. All right. Yeah, I think the Eagles still have a talented team. Okay. Um, they, they slide in. They're the 10-6 and six team. Um, and then the other one is going to be the Minnesota Vikings. And I know you had the Vikings winning win the division. division. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I know I'm leaving out the Falcons, which is a, a potential team, and I'm also leaving out the Bears. But but that's, that's what well, I Well, guess got. what? We're both leaving out the Bears because I get the Packers as well. So I'm flipping around with you. You get the Packers winning. I get the Vikings winning. I'm taking the Packers as a wild card. And I am buying the Matty Ice story. I like the Falcons. I think they have the three best wide receivers in football. So I'm taking the Falcons as a wild card. Okay. Yeah, the Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Sanu, Sanu is a third receiver. That's pretty good. It's a nice good. trio. It's a nice trio. All right. Let's talk about our local team, the Patriots. Give me your three big storylines coming out of the training camp. Oh, wow. So um, definitely the offensive line situation, uh, particularly David Andrews going down. I was doing that one. That's one of my storylines. And, yep. and, and, you know, what's that going to look like? And can can they can Skarnacki coach these guys up? Right? Plus, They're, they just signed three guys they say, last they got, week. They get Russell Bodine from Buffalo, who is a, a bona fide center. And then they picked up a couple offensive linemen that they might be able to move into that position. Three so, signings in one week. That's a yeah. concern. Okay. And, I and, and, and Ted Karras can win that job still. He can. But they gotta they gotta have backup, right? They gotta have backup not only for competing for the job, but also if somebody goes down, right? And so, stability. I mean so things they get I'm, stable. I'm very concerned about the offensive line. All right, what else you got? What's the um, second? The other my second thing is just the running back situation. And what's that gonna who's gonna really emerge as the running back I mean, on this they team? Got five you, five headed backfield, right? They, they do. They do. And you got Burke. And you got James White, and you got um, 
Sony, the, the Sony. You got the, the rookie the they drafted. Yep. Um, Harris, right? Yep. There's lots of stuff going on there. So that that'll be interesting to see what happens there. And then finally, my my last one is just Josh Gordon. Um, Ooh, you know, all right. I mean, you could make a case for the whole receiving core, but I'm really focusing in on Josh Gordon. Um, we know what he's capable of. Um, is his head going to be in the game? Is he going to connect with Brady? Can he make a difference? Uh, you know what? That's my number one. The whole wide receiver situation. I got it right here. Do the big, the big wide receivers pay off? I mean, they get four guys over 6'1". They've never had that before. When you think about it in the past, Amadola, Julian, of course, he's the only guy not over 6'1". You're not even over 6 for that matter, right? Yeah. But do the big boys pay off? And is that their replacement for not having a bona fide tight end? So I'm with you on that one. I agree with you on the offensive line. I'm also going to call it a tie. I call it both lines because I'm a little concerned about the D-line. It's all based on Michael Bennett. Can he be the replacement for Trey Flowers? We'll see. He sounds like he had a, tra- a great training camp, so we'll find out. And then for me, number three is number seven. Can they win number seven? It'll be the all-time winningest Super Bowl team ever. We shall see. All right. I like it. Let's pick, brother. Let's get right into it. What are your conference finals teams? Uh, AFC, I'm going with a repeat. Uh, I'm going with, with uh, Chiefs-Patriots. I'm with you. Deja vu. Um, it doesn't matter where the game is because it just doesn't matter for the Patriots when it's playoff They're the best time. two teams yeah. by far, right? And I may, I may have seriously had the Colts in that equation, had luck not retired because I really think they have a good team this year. Yep. Um, but I, I'm going Chiefs-Pats. All right. I am as well. What do you got in the NFC? Uh, NFC, I'm going uh, Saints. I, I think the Saints are going to be right there again. They've, they've just sniffed it twice in a row. Two like years that. in a row, like I, I like said. That. Yep. Uh, they get back there. As much as I'd like to see a repeat against either the Vikings or the Rams, the two teams they lost to the last couple of years, I'm going to go with – you're going to love this. You're going to love this, Russ. I'm, I don't believe this. Yeah. Is he really going to say this? I, I, I'm going to go Saints-Cowboys. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, you know what? That's my hot pick. I couldn't do it. I, I just had to bet my head. I think it's going to be the Rams once again. But I like your thinking, brother. All right. All right. So having said that, who goes to the Super Bowl? Um, Patriots-Saints. Patriots say that's what I have as well. You do? Wow. I do, man. Wow. Patriots say. Right. And we're not going to make our prediction yet on who wins that game. We'll wait a couple weeks. <laughs> All right, sports fans. PP and Z will be back at you next we're week. We're going to do our pick six first. Oh, what am I doing? Our pick six? <laughs> I'm so excited about the Super Bowl. All right, let's do pick six. Tonight, right. Green Bay gets the beers. Who do you got? Um, I'm going to take. I'm going to go Green Bay on that one. I think they go into Chicago, and Aaron Rodgers, comfortable, nice weather, takes care of business. I'm with you, Green Bay. Atlanta at Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota's offense is 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 deadly. Um, Matt Ryan's not a good road quarterback. I'm going to go Vikings. I'm with you on that one as well. Titans at Browns. Um, Browns take care of the Titans easily. I agree with you on that one. All right. Casey at Jags. So this is interesting. Right? Um, I think the Jaguars are watching first half AFC Championship film when the Patriots went into halftime 24 0. Am Mahomes I couldn't, about to hear what I think I'm going to hear? Mahomes couldn't find his way out of a paper bag. And I also can see the storyline going into the week, too. What was, what were, are the Chiefs in trouble? Are the oh! chi- are they- Oh, big, Josh big, from KC, are you listening? Because they're gonna uh, lose week big, one, apparently. Yeah, he big, says big, it right here. The Jaguars will oh. will take care of Kansas City. It'll be a close game. They're def- they're gonna actually give Mahomes some struggles. I know Mahomes is great physically. He's got can do amazing things. He also right. makes mistakes. And you know right. who's gonna capitalize on those mistakes? The Jacksonville Jaguars. Whew. I'm taking KC, but that's he boy. That's out there on a limb. All right. Steelers at Pats. Uh, I, I, Steelers are a six and ten, not seven and nineteen this year. The Patriots, that's like division easy. champions. Easy, I easy. I still got Pats Patriots. winning though. So okay. you got Steelers. I got Pats. All right. All right. Finally, the only team we differ on is KC and Jazz. We got one more. Texans at New Orleans. You know, New Orleans lost their first game at home last year. Um, I oh think they, the year before, two years against... ago, we went down to New Orleans and saw them play. Yes, against the Pats. Against the Pats, and they lost that game. The Texans, I think, go into New Orleans and they and they beat and they beat them. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Houston in that game. Whoa! All right, we, we differ only in two games because I am going New Orleans and I've got uh, Casey and you've got the Jags. So we'll see what happens All next right. week. Hey, next week PB is down in uh, Miami doing a scouting trip to see the Dolphins and the Pats. The show will still go on. We're gonna be live from the something called the Coyote in Tuxbury. PB will be calling in. 
and we'll do our pick six once again. Everybody have a great week. Thanks for tuning in to the PB&Z Sports Chaos Show. Good night, everyone.